Hi, my name is Chad, and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to set up Drupal on Cloud Sites. Let's start by logging into our control panel, going over to Cloud Sites, and prepping a domain uh, to install Drupal 2. As you can see, we already have a couple domains provisioned. We'll go ahead and use one of these existing domains. Um, if you need to set up a new uh, domain, it only takes a couple of steps in a few minutes' time, and I actually have another video uh, on the site that you can watch of our walkthrough of that process. So for now, we'll go ahead and install this onto the RackspaceCloudDemo.com domain. So we'll click there, and then go over to the Features tab. First thing that we're going to do is set up our database uh, that Drupal will be installed to. We'll click Add. We'll go ahead and give the database a name. Let's call it Drupal. Looks like that name already exists. I'm going to call it Drupal 1. Go ahead and make the username the same, just to keep it easy. And come up with a good strong password for that database. It takes just a couple of uh, seconds to provision a database. And then once that's done, we can actually refresh the page here and take a look at the database uh, back in information. Uh, this page here, once you click on a uh, provision database, will show you um, the database name, user information below, and then the real important part is the host name, which points to the specific uh, MySQL cluster that this database was provisioned to. And we'll need this here in just a minute during the install process. Let's go ahead and head over to the Drupal site and get this downloaded. Go ahead and download the, the latest release, which is Drupal 6.14. So I'll we'll just drop this on our desktop real quick. And there we go. And then just hop into your favorite FTP app. As you can see, I'm already logged into my Cloud Sites FTP account here. Uh, we'll go under the Rackspace Cloud demo.com domain and then into the content folder. And let's create a new directory to install this to. Let's name it Drupal. Next thing that we need to do is grab all the install files and upload those to our Cloud Sites account. One quick edit that we do need to make for Drupal, which will help us out during the installation process later, is set up the proper rules in our htaccess file to enable uh, mod rewrite for clean URLs. While this is uploading, let's go ahead and take a look at our htaccess file. It's going to be one simple change towards the bottom of the uh, already predefined htaccess file, which makes it very easy. Basically, we just need to uncomment this line right here. If uh, you've installed Drupal to the root directory, uh, you can uncomment the line below. Or if it's in a different subdirectory other than Drupal, just simply rename uh, the name of the directory that you uploaded uh, your Drupal installation files to. So we'll uncomment this line and save the file. It looks like these files are done uploading here. Let's go ahead and take that HT access file and upload it one more time and we'll be good to go. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and open up a new tab and point to the directory uh, that we just uploaded those files to. As you can see, we are presented with the uh, web installation script for Drupal. Just a couple of quick steps and we'll be good to go. So we'll go ahead and install in English. It's going to tell us that uh, we need to create the settings.php file. So let's hop back over to our FTP app, go to the sites directory, default directory. As you can see, uh, the default.settings.php file is already there. We go ahead and leave that one as is and just create a brand new file. We'll call it settings.php. On the cloud site system, uh, permissions are already set up for Apache to go ahead and populate that data. So all you need to do is create the file. You don't have to go in there and, and manually edit anything. So we'll come back to our installation script here and tell it to try again. And we're good to go. Now we just need to populate all of our, all of our database information. So let's hop back over to um, our database page in the cloud control panel and grab the database name, which is the same as the username. Go ahead and type in our password. And one last step here under advanced options is we need to update the database host name to point to uh, the MySQL cluster that our database is hosted on. So we'll grab that, paste it in here. Database support, you can just leave it as a default. And then table prefix, uh, you can set that if you need to. 
continue. I should be just about done. And that's it. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and set up a few other things here. We'll go ahead and give our site a name called Raxface Cloud Drupal site. Pop in our email address. Go to username, email address, and then a good strong, good strong password or medium string. Whatever works for you. Uh, set our time zone. And because of that change we made in the HT access file to allow for um, clean URLs, we'll go ahead and make sure those are set to be enabled. And this gives you um, all that good search engine optimization goodness that uh, everybody wants for their site. So we'll leave that enabled and we'll be good to go. All set, we'll go ahead and visit the new site. And that's it, we're up and running with Drupal. Uh, a couple of suggestions that I will make for you uh, on the cloud site system uh, that will definitely improve um, performance, especially if you have a heavily trafficked website. Uh, keep in mind on cloud sites, um, any web application such as Drupal um, is already deployed onto a highly scalable platform across multiple nodes and a database that's run in a, a high capacity database cluster. But there are always things that you can do to uh, continuously improve the performance of your site, things like load times to the end user, um, reduce your overall compute cycle usage, things of, things of that nature. And a lot of this is built into Drupal Core. So let's take a look at a few of these options, uh, which are very easy to enable. And that's under the performance section. First thing that we'll do is enable normal uh, page caching. In addition to normal page caching, um, there's some other settings such as minimum cache lifetime, which you can uh, poke around with if you have a very heavily trafficked site. Uh, but some of the other basic um, things to enable are make sure uh, page compression is enabled, uh, block cache um, that we can enable as well, and then optimizing our CSS and drop JavaScript files. We'll go ahead and save that configuration. And just those few simple steps alone can uh, not, only, not only help increase uh, page load times, but also uh, reduces the the overall load on the back-end infrastructure, and, and which in turn on cloud sites specifically, uh, will uh, reduce your overall uh, bandwidth uh, and then uh, compute cycle usage, just especially if you have a lot of uh, a lot of visitors to your Drupal site. Um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, I hope uh, this presentation was uh, helpful for you, and uh, we look forward to seeing more and more Drupal sites deployed on cloud sites. Thanks for watching.